Hi, you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. On this show, I bring the simplicity of hearing God's voice into everyday life in a no-nonsense, authentic, and super practical way. With coffee in hand and real life in our faces, let's do this. Hey, busy mama. I know you may have so many dreams bubbling in your soul, and I want to propose that podcasting could be a good way to get started. If you're a born communicator, a teacher, mentor, or you just have a message you want to get into the world, sitting behind a mic is a really low pressure, low risk way to get started and make a mark. I want to introduce my podcast plan mastermind. It's a 10 week journey designed for you with bite sized steps that fit perfectly into your busy schedule. In just about five hours a week, you'll have your podcast live, no joke. I want to invite you to join my supportive, pressure-free space where you will be coached by me to unleash your message into the world. One of my recent students hit number 55 on the U.S. charts within just two months of launching her show, and that's not easy to do. And another, working 70 to 90 hours a week, is already reaching listeners in almost a dozen countries. I've created the coaching experience that I really wish I had when I started, and I've packed it with secrets on creating, growing, and monetizing your podcast. Are you ready to turn your dreams into a reality? Let's chat. You can ask all your questions at javawithjenpodcast.org to book a call with me because your voice deserves to be heard, and I want to help you build your dreams and make them a reality. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode here at Java with Jen. Now, I have a lovely return guest, Miss Kira St. Pierre, who has been on the show before talking about what it was like for her to chase her dream of being a podcaster. She had coached with me and what that was like as a full time working mom with three kids who were homeschooled, mind you, uh, and just all the things that come with all those things. And so today, though, we are kind of diving into an extension of Kira's story as she shares with us what it's been like for her as the Lord has moved in her heart to quit her job and stay home with her kids. Now, the reason we're sharing this is because I have known quite a few mothers in my life experience and in my friend circles who have become burdened at some point where they wanted to quit their jobs and stay home to raise or homeschool their kids. I think this is a noble, wonderful thing. Now, there's no shade to any moms who work jobs or choose to work or love to work. So please do not feel any shade. I work a full-time job running a business. So there's no shade there. And every season of our life is a little bit different. But I wanted to address this because I've seen it be something that has really weighed on friends of mine many times. And I've seen how the Lord comes in clutch Every single time when a woman puts her heart to, I want to stay home and raise my kids. So we're going to dive into Kira's story. Kira, that was a very long intro, but uh, welcome to the show again. I you covered it all. <laughs> I know. There's the episode. Let's go. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Uh, but welcome back. It's so good to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah. So why don't you give my listeners, in case they didn't catch your previous episode and they're and you're new to them, why don't you give a little bit of a a uh, little bit of your background, who you are, where you come from, all the things. Well, as Jen said, I am now a stay-at-home mom. Um, I did go through her original podcasting class, so I'm an original. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, OG. And. Uh, <laughs> And I have a podcast up called Growing God's Gifts. Um, I am kind of in the middle of a sabbatical. My last episode was back in December, but we will get that back up and running soon. But uh, my heart has always been to to grow the gifts that God has given me, both uh, spiritually, physically, um, the gifts of my children, finances, that kind of stuff. And so that's primarily what I focus on. And just recently, God has brought me into a new season of getting to grow my gifts at home, as in raising my children and homeschooling them full time. So exciting, uh, exciting things ahead. Lots of changes. (laughs) Yeah, lots of changes. And that's totally understandable why your show is on a break right now. And that's the beautiful thing about podcasting. You can build those breaks in. And so that's amazing. Um, Okay, so we're going to dive into this again, like I had said, because I've encountered so many moms that want to stay home with their kids. And there's a lot of factors. So as we, as we go into this, ladies who are listening, or even husbands, men who are listening, um, 
I want you to understand like there is no pressure. There's no like right or wrong here. It's just a reality that a lot of women end up facing at some point because of the fact that God has built us inherently to be nurturers and to take what God gives us and to create something out of it. Women are inherently creators also. And so, I mean, our wombs create humans, right? Our hands create meals. Our love creates a home, you know, like women are just creators. Um, and so as I've encountered so many women dealing with this, I just thought it was so relevant when Kira and I started talking about this, what probably got oh, back in September. I feel like, yeah. Yeah. Back in September. Yeah. August, I, feel, September, I think August is when I sat on your couch and we were talking about, yeah. uh, I said, Hey, I felt like the Lord was saying I should set a time frame for this. And things just started going from there. So about That's six true. months ago. <laughs> That's true. And I do remember like you were sitting on the couch and why don't you share a little bit about that? I don't want to do all the talking you share about that way back to August, September, or maybe even before that, have you always had a desire to stay home with your kids? And what was the evolution <laughs> of that for you? <laughs> Um, so way back in my, uh, like high school days, my dream of course was just to be a wife and mother. That's all I cared about. I'm like, hey, what do I want to go to college for? I have no idea. I just want to be a wife and mom. Yeah. Well, my parents went through a divorce after 20 years of marriage. So it kind of rocked my world and completely changed my, my outlook on life. I was like, oh no, I'm never going to be dependent on a man because what happens if they up and leave or something happens. And, yeah. um, and so I was determined I'm going to have a career and be reliant on myself. Never mind that God is my sole provider, but <laughs> kind of threw that out the window <laughs> for a second there. Um, and then I went through several, several, several years of, um, pursuing a career, pursuing, um, a degree got, I went and got a degree, went and got a job. I well kind of had a kid right in the middle of all that, but, um, that of course changed my life as well. And I needed a job at that point. But, um, so my, my desire to be at home did not come back honestly until recently, probably within the last two years, God just began changing my heart about that. And I realized after many years that I had been pursuing my career and living the way that I had been living out of fear, mm -hmm. out of that fear of being abandoned, both physically and financially, or, um, not being able to provide for the family that I had just recently created and, uh, things like that. And then now three kids later, <laughs> we didn't exactly have the option to to go down to to, to one income. So it uh, it took a while for me to start digesting the idea or the concept of coming home. But I really started to feel this this weight on my heart. Like my kids need me. Mm -hmm. My kids not thriving very well in public school. Um, they were doing well academically, but socially um, and with the teachers and with the way things are going with the public schools and things like that, they just weren't thriving. And um, that's kind of where that desire began uh, to come back up and and made me realize you're, my kids need me. Yeah. They need that, that spiritual leadership at home, that discipleship at home. And they weren't getting that in public school. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so we had a wonderful nanny who stayed at home with my kids when we decided to bring them home and homeschool them. Of course, I was still working full-time job, but um, that worked for about a year, a year and a half, two years. But I just really, really felt that pull. Like I, I wanted to be home. I wanted to be the one raising them. And uh, my husband and I had been praying about it for a long time, had talked about it. And um we finally just said, Lord, okay, look, if you want, if you want me to come home, <laughs> we need you to make the, make the way possible because right now we can't financially afford to lose that income. And, uh, so of course, as, as we began praying with that, it just kept getting heavier and heavier on our hearts, but it seemed like nothing was moving in our finances or nothing was changing on that front. And then uh, I remember talking to you back in August mm -hmm. and uh, saying that the Lord just kind of put it on my heart, like, because I was just crying out to him. I was like, Lord, I don't understand. We've been wanting this for about a year and a half now. And you told me, you promised me that this was coming, but there's no changes. There's no improvement in our finances. There's no way for me to do that. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, well, I've given you this promise, but he's like, I need you to walk it out in faith. I need you to step out in faith and walk it mm -hmm. like walk out that promise. It's not, I'm not going to just hand it to you and throw it in your lap. 
And um, he's, I said, okay, well, what does that mean exactly? He said, set a date. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, okay, right. Mm -hmm. And then um, I finally just set a date. I said, okay, well, what about February? End of February. He said, okay. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay. And so from that point on, I mean, we're talking about six months things just started coming together. Our finances just started coming together. I started seeing ways where there wasn't ways before and um, creative financing. Like we just, we have gotten to the point where we have paid off everything besides our house and my student loan. Like we're down to that. Wow. <laughs> Vehicles are paid off. All of our other bills are paid off. We don't have any other debt. <laughs> so Everything just started coming together. Um, like I said, we got all of that thing, all of those things paid off, got paid down to to just our house student loan. Um, we're actually paying my car off at the end of this month or at wow. the end of this coming month. So everything will be taken care of, and um, we are financially able to live off of my husband's income. <laughs> That's amazing! So, what a miracle! Okay, so there's a few things I want to touch on. First of all, I feel like even though you were able to see in retrospect, and I feel like this is a really valuable principle I've been learning in my own life too, which is probably why I see it. Even though in retrospect, you were like, my decision to build a career was based on fear. And now the Lord's trying to pull me into a faith position. Mm -hmm. The Lord was still able to use that for your good because you still had to end up providing for yourself at some point. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you pursued a career, the Lord knew you were gonna need that. And so you had those tools in your hand, not just to provide for yourself, but also to help support your family as you guys were growing. Cause you did need that income for a while. Yes. And so I feel like even in that, and I say that for my listeners to hear, even in times when we can look back and say, Oh, I made that decision in fear when the Lord allows us to make certain decisions. I mean, he could have brought it to your attention a long time ago. He could have addressed it a long time ago, but then possibly you would have ended up on a path where you would have been dependent and not set up to take care of yourself. And True. so the Lord allowed that, even though it was maybe born out of a, a place you wouldn't choose now, the Lord used it for your good, right? Very and so true. I love that. Um, And so it kind of gives a little bit of peace, like, hey, the Lord's got us even when we're a hot mess, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know anybody who does anything totally not out of fear. I'm like, there are still times we make those decisions. But, um, but I also wanted to point out like, how you, okay, actually, I wanted to ask you about the nanny situation. Cause I never, mm -hmm. I never had a nanny. Um, it seems like it would be really hard to find one. That's a good fit for the family. So I feel like the Lord's hand was on that situation as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, so our nanny, uh, was previously at the daycare that we were with before. Mm -hmm. And when we left the daycare, she, she basically came and filled the shoes that we needed at the house. Mm -hmm. And, um, she was phenomenal. She was wonderful. She, um, she picked up on our parenting style and ran with it. Like she didn't do anything inconsistent with what we, what we wanted for our kids. Um, she shared our beliefs. I mean, she's like all of it. Um, the way she, the way she related to our children, the way she handled them, the way she disciplined them, every bit of it was a godsend and a blessing for us. So we, we could not have asked for a better, a better person to fill those shoes when we needed it during that season. And, um, so yeah, it was definitely a blessing. And I feel like, her. so I feel like this progression of you guys moving you home, really, it was a progression. It wasn't even a black and oh, white yeah. because of, of initially they were in public school. And so your mm -hmm. first step of faith was getting them home and finding a nanny. And so that in that season was the Lord's provision. And then beyond that was then, okay, the Lord is stirring in my heart. Now I think it's me that needs to come home. Now I love mm -hmm. what you said where the Lord was like, okay, I'm not going to just deliver this promise in your lap. You have to walk it out in faith, right? Because the word of God says mm -hmm. faith without works is dead, <laughs> right? You show <laughs> me your faith and I'll show you my faith with my works, right? And so yep. when you set a deadline, and I feel like we even talked about that on the couch, mm -hmm was, and I don't, I don't know, was it me that said that to you or Holy Spirit that said that to you, whichever, um, maybe I echoed what the Holy Spirit was saying, but I feel like we did talk about that. Like sometimes mm -hmm. you need to set a definitive deadline. Why was that significant? Why do you feel like that shifted things? Um, I feel like it's, I almost want to, I mean, I know that 
I don't, I know the scripture to me kind of has two different versions of this, like don't test the, don't test the Lord, your God, and then put your God to the test kind of thing. Yeah. So I think this was kind of one of those things. He's like, try me. Mm. <laughs> he's like, try me, just, just test me. Like, see, see if this promise that I've given you is like, if you set that deadline, I'm going to, I'm going to work this out for you. Mm. And he's, it was kind of like, um, like, of course I had this, uh, I'm a spreadsheet junkie. Don't do, <laughs> excuse me for this. I'm a nerd when it comes to spreadsheets. I do my budget. And so I'm looking at all the numbers and I'm like, oh, this is not possible. This is possible. Well, when I, when I started, okay, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, well, if these, all these things align and fall into place, we could potentially be done by February. And I also thought February would be good because a, I'd get my, I'd get a raise in January. Um, if I'm a couple of months into the next year, I can pull my vacation pay for that full year. Um, there were a bunch of other things that, that would fall into place with that. I'd get my, my new year's bonus. I mean, there was a lot of other things, a lot of extras. We would have our income tax return by then, like all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, realistically, February, the end of February puts us at a good spot. We can accomplish at least this much as far as I can see. And, um, and so that made me feel a little more like it was a slightly more attainable goal. Mm -hmm. Um, but still it wasn't a hundred percent at that point. Yeah. And he, when I chose that date, he started making it happen. There were, I mean, there were times I remember one month in particular at my job. Um, I work in the, I worked, I work, <laughs> I worked in the finance industry. Um, I basically did loans for a living. And, um, so of course we get incentives based on, um, like additional products that we sell, like for instance, gap insurance on an auto loan, um, or an extended warranty or, um, what we call payment protection, things like that. So um, there were several different avenues to which I could get extra incentives um, each month. Well, there was this one particular month where we were, we were it was tight. Like we were probably not going to make it if we didn't have a certain amount or whatever. And, and I was just like, Lord, I was like, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how it's going to happen, but you told me that you were going to make this work for us. You told me that we were going to live in abundance, that we were going to have our thing. Like I just started basically Reminding turning his words back to him and saying, Hey, yeah. this is what yeah. you promised me. So I was like, we were probably about halfway through the month and it just wasn't looking. I'm like, I don't know how we're going to cover next month's bills. Mm. And, um, and so he said, well, how much do you need? And mm -hmm. I said, well, realistically, if we could get just this much, I was like, we could, we could survive. Like we could make it. It'd be okay. And he's like, okay, done. And so I was telling my husband about it. And um, a little while later, my husband came back to me and he's like, the Lord was just telling me, he's like, I really, I really feel like you were just asking for too little. Oh, <laughs> I was I like, too bad. like he's speaking to my husband and saying, and my husband's saying, he said, you were asking for too little. I don't know what you asked for, but he said, that's not enough. <laughs> oh, I love it. And so I went back to him and I was like, okay, Lord. Um, well, I mean, you, this would be nicer. And he's like, are you sure that's all you want? And I was like, well, I mean, we could, we could shoot for the moon and go for this. And he's like, okay, done. And he even exceeded that. <laughs> that he more than doubled my normal paycheck with wow. incentives. Oh my and gosh. No, no, this is, this is how big of a God thing this month was. Like everybody else across the credit union, all the other loan officers across the entire credit union, had the worst month ever. <laughs> like everybody was struggling to make any kind of incentives and I'm blowing it out of the park more than I've ever made in my life in the eight years that I worked there. Wow. I'm wow. blowing it out of the water. And I mean, even in the loan meetings and stuff, they were saying, Kira, how are you doing this? What's going on? And I said, the truth, <laughs> I told the Lord, I wasn't going to make it be able to make ends meet this month. And he came through. Yeah. <laughs> and so wonderful opportunity to be able to share not only my faith, but just the, just how good God is yeah, when, I mean, yeah. all I had to do was ask. And even, um, even like a, maybe a month or so ago, we haven't, we had a new manager at work and, um, I had an opportunity to tell her about this story from back from September, mind you, this was September that, 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 uh, incentive check came through. And, uh, and so I was telling her about it. And there was this other thing where we were halfway through, like, I think we probably had like a week and a half left of the month and it was, we were dead. Loans were dead. 
And I was like, well, I was like, this may be the first month that I don't meet my incentives. And I said, uh, the next, okay. So the next day I come back and within the like hour and a half of opening, I already had three of the products that I sell for incentives sold. <laughs> was that the, and, was that the one when you were, you had listened to my episode on activating angels and you activated yes, your angels? Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> yes. It was that. Uh-huh. And so, um, I, my manager came in uh, later that day or whatever. And and I was telling her, I was like, I was like, look, I got my incentives or whatever. I thought I wasn't going to make it. And she's, she jokingly said, what did you do? Pray last night? And I said, well, actually, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> that's so good. Oh it my gosh. Just, it was so neat to get to share the, what God's doing in our lives financially. And, um, of course, when everybody started finding out that I was, that I was leaving my job after (laughs) that many years, they all, all were calling or whatever. And a lot of them, uh, I got a chance to share that same story with got got a lot, uh, a chance to share my faith and where, what God had brought us through and all that kind of stuff. So as I'm leaving this company from, for eight years, after eight years of working there, uh, I got to share my faith with several people and it was, it was neat to have that opportunity, um, even in leaving. So that's so beautiful. God's so extra. He's like, Hey, listen, <laughs> yes. listen, Linda, we're going to give you everything you prayed for. <laughs> and on the way out, you're going to go out with a bang yep. and let them all yep. know I'm awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. I just love it. Okay. And I just love to, I love that. Hold on. My brain went blank. Uh, <laughs> where was I going with this? Holy spirit. Feel her mind. Oh, with the thought oh, that you had. <laughs> that's what it was. Uh, dang it. Now I'm going to have to edit this episode. <laughs> Lazy Linda over here. Um, So I love that what you did though. A, I like that your husband was listening to the Holy Spirit too, because A, Mm -hmm. this is a partnership, right? And that he came back and he's like, hey, you're not asking big enough because I want to, I want to say probably back in January sometime, I was praying into the new year and I was praying and praying, but there was a a morning when the Lord just spoke to me and he kind of like, he was just sharing his thoughts and sharing his heart with me. And he goes, generally, you know, he goes, you know, when people ask me for small things, I feel really unseen and unknown. And yeah. And I was like, I just thought about that. And he was like, he was like, how would you feel if you're capable of giving them the the universe and they just Mm -hmm. ask for peanuts every time you would feel so unknown. And I was like, Ugh, that's a knife in the heart, you know, like, right. That's so and true. it's so it's- funny. Cause we we're on the opposite end feeling greedy for asking for too much. And he's like, right? do you not know who I am? <laughs> exactly. Like, do you not know? I want and do you bless not know me. who you are because you're mine? <laughs> exactly. And so that brings us to really just the valuable pivot point of this episode of like, for those moms. And, and, and this brings me to a question of like, what would you say to those moms? especially having walked through what you have and, and having sat with the Lord through that. And, and one of my questions was what role did the Holy Spirit play in this? But I feel like that's kind of evident through your story. Um, but what would you say to other moms in this position? And again, there's no shade on any moms who love to work and, and mm-hmm. feel a call to work. I do and want to keep working in that because there's a grace for whatever God has called you to. So if you are a working mom, There's a grace to be what you need to be to your family Mm -hmm. and work the job. But when you start feeling your heart shifting, you have to pay attention to that, right? And so what would you say to any of those moms that are in the position that you were, and they're just maybe scared to death, like, I don't, or maybe their husband isn't on board and their husband hasn't said, yes, you can. Like, what would you even say to women that are in that transitionary, scared to death, but want to consider it kind of a place? (laughs) Well, the, honestly, the biggest thing is pray. Um, that I know it sounds so simple and so cliche as Christians to say, oh, pray about it, but no, like legit pray about it, like pour your heart out to, to God. And I mean, that's, that's what I did. I was like, Lord, I never wanted this, but you're the one who put this on my heart. You're the one who's been changing my heart. So you can't just give me this heart, heart change and not expect me to do something about it. Like, what is it you're wanting me to do? How are we going to do this? And y'all, I, I, I mean, I'm still terrified and I'm home, you know? <laughs> but, but my, even my husband though, my husband was terrified of this because it's all on his shoulders and that's, that's terrifying for him because 
way back in the past, I mean, he's, he's lost a job before he's lost another job before. And I mean, God's been good through both of them. Don't get me wrong, but he, he does have that real fear. And I, I understand that. And the thing that I had to remind him every time that that fear came up for him was look how far he's brought us. Mm -hmm. Look what he's promised us. Look what he's done already. Yeah. So why would we not trust him to continue doing um, what he's promised? I mean, he didn't just bring me home and then all of a sudden we're going to lose every financial backing we've ever had and, and be destitute for the rest of our lives. That's not what he promised us. Yeah. That's yeah. not what his word promises. And I think so for, for the people who are for the women who are um, who do have that heart to be home with their children, that's when I would just start diving in in your quiet time and saying, Lord, you've put this on my heart. This is my heart. And God, God's heart is for the children too. Like he, the, the family unit is, is something he created. It's something that he cherishes and he cherishes the children, especially. And in the, the day and age that we're living in and the social climate we're living in, that's more important now more than ever because our children need to be discipled. They need to be raised in a godly home. And when they're being exposed to all the junk that's out there in public school and all that kind of stuff, I mean, there's, if, if that's your only option, then you're going to have to be working overtime at home to, to help counteract that, not only on your knees in prayer, but also in discipling your children in the time that you do have them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. if you have that opportunity, or if you can begin working towards that opportunity to be home with your kids, then be in prayer about it. Be on your knees every day until it happens. And that's, I, th I think, get, I mean, get that promise from God, get that Rhema word from God and cling to that. Don't let anything deter you from it once you have it. And that's what I would say is get on your knees, pray, Lord, give me a word, give me a promise that I can hold on to and hold on to it for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. Well, and I want to point out two things from your story that I feel like played into your success, if you will. Mm -hmm. One, the Bible says that where two or more agree on a thing, this I will do for them, right? He, he, there is something powerful about agreement. And so for some of the women who would like to quit, but their husband isn't on board, that's a mm -hmm. real factor to work with, right? And so I, I would suggest being in agreement with your husband is really important, but that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go down to his level of lack of faith. It's more like he needs mm -hmm. to come up to your level of faith. So that's where we pray him into that place of faith, right? Or, yes. or we lay out some specifics and, or, and, and it even maybe in talking with the husband say, what would it take for you to be okay with me staying home with the kids? What would it take? You name the stakes and then you yeah. take his stakes into prayer and you say, God, this is what it's going to take according to him anyways, unless you just radically change his heart, this is what it's going to take. So this is what I need you to do. So being in agreement and, and, and working through that, any kind of misalignment that there is between you and your spouse is going to be important in that place of prayer and having peace in that God honors and loves like even in uh, Corinthians, it talks about if a woman is is uh, married to an unbelieving husband, that doesn't necessarily just mm -hmm. mean unsaved. It could mean he's just not living in the space of faith, right? And mm -hmm. so if you're married to an unbelieving husband or a husband who doesn't have, isn't walking in that same space of faith as you, it says that you set an example by your life so that he will come into the the believership or whatever the phrasing is. I'm totally misquoting it, <laughs> but the concept is that we still live, we don't, we, it's not an excuse to live in a, a place of um, contention and disagreement and strife in your home that will not produce the, the fruit of the spirit. Right. And so having peace that by staying in alignment with your husband, even if that means you're praying and praying and praying that God will get him on board, staying in peace with him, a gives the Lord more room to work, but B allows you to stay under that grace covering that the Lord is giving mm -hmm. to you to still be what your family needs, even though you may still be working. And so yeah. I feel like that's important. But then the other thing that's important in your story is the fact, which we mentioned already, is your specifics. And so like I even got yeah. a text right before our interview of one of my other podcast students who she and I got on a call 
And we started praying very specifically. She's in a transition and there was all these things in the air. And so I said, okay, we need some specifics. What kind of job are, be are we believing for? How much do you want to make? What days do you want to work? Where does it need to be located? I even said, you know what? We're going to pray that you have this job before you ever have to move so that you know that you're moving to a job. And she just texted <laughs> me. She goes, I just got a job and I don't have to move till May. And so nice. Like, but we were very specific. And I feel like- mm -hmm. I feel like that's important because God, A, wants to give us the desires of our heart. But two, when we get specific with the Lord, then when he mm -hmm. does it, we can say, look what God did, because we were very specific, <laughs> you know? So Almost you know like that spreadsheet that I told you I'm nerding out about? Yeah. <laughs> I've got like everything, like anything you could possibly imagine I have in my spreadsheet I have on multiple different tabs. And on one of my tabs in my spreadsheet, I have um, like my dream or my, pro like the promise that God like mm -hmm. all the promises that God has spoken to us about this. And I have like my list that we'd be able to leave my job and stay home with the kids, raise my kids to love God, homeschool, uh, that Jacoby's income would be enough that, I mean, like I, I, I'm listing it all out. Like I have every single one of them like ticked off. Like they're all, they're all marked off. Like it's, he fulfilled every single one of them, but I've had that list in front of me uh -huh. through this whole process. Like I wrote it down and I clung to it every single time. I'm like, Lord, this is what you promised me. This is what you promised me. I have it written down in my journal. I have it written down in my spreadsheet. And it's, you just, you keep that in front of you and you keep, <laughs> you remind the Lord, Hey, this is what you told me. This is what you told yeah. me. I'm holding you to it. <laughs> yes. That's so good. I love it. And a lot of times people think that that annoys God, like we're nagging him or something, but I think mm -hmm. it lights him up because he's like, Oh, look at my girl. She knows what I can do. You know, like <laughs> she knows. Yeah. She knows she's not going to let any kind of little discouragement come by. And so, um, you know, I feel like that spreadsheet, I just have a gut instinct people are going to want to get their hands on your spreadsheet for those others that are spreadsheet nerds <laughs> and financial. You need to make that a freebie, like a template where you offer it to listeners and stuff. Listen, listeners, if you would be interested in her template, like her little spreadsheet thing, uh, why don't you send her a message on Instagram or send her an email? I'll put her handles down in the show notes so you can get a hold of her. But, um, okay. So Kira, then why don't you go ahead and listen, you guys, I, I know Kira's baby just woke up from a nap. So we need to let her get <laughs> onto her little sweetie that he's, she stayed home for. Uh, but Kira, why don't you tell us how the listeners can get a hold of you if they'd like to connect with you further? Uh, well, I've got a few different places, uh, on Facebook is primarily where I'm at. I haven't ventured to Instagram or any of those things yet. Um, but you can find me on Facebook at growing God's gifts, and you could also e email me at growinggodsgifts at gmail.com. Perfect. Mama. Hey, baby girl. Hey, oh. Shiloh. Yes, Shiloh's at school right now. <laughs> okay, so Kira, um, so you're on Facebook, Growing God's Gifts. They can email you at growinggodsgifts at gmail.com. You guys go check out her podcast, Growing God's Gifts. It's wonderful with Kira St. Pierre. I'm going to drop all those links in the show notes. And if you're interested in her spreadsheet, look at me, Kira, I'm just opting you into some things. If you're interested, <laughs> y'all reach out because I want to know who all is going to be interested in this. But hey. Y'all, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Kira, for joining me, especially having to juggle nap times and all of that. You're a, you're the thanks boss. Thanks for having man. me back. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Y'all, thanks so much for listening. Send this to another mom friend that you have, especially if you have a mom friend who has been considering leaving the workforce and staying home with her kids. I think my my ending advice would be sit down and get specific with the Lord and maybe even compile a list with your husband as far as like, hey, babe, how can we get on the same page of this? What are the things we can add both of our faith to come into agreement about and believe the Lord to do in our life? Sometimes my husband and I, especially when we're facing a huge financial mountain, we will literally write down all the things that we need on paper and we will both put our hands on it and we will pray over it. We're like, you're our provider, Lord, meet these needs. And you, and literally every time we'll come back in a couple of months and we'll look and the Lord has just made a way to cross out everything. So I would say, do that with your dream to stay home with your kids. Do that with your desire. If you are desiring to quit your job or you need a better job or whatever it is, put it before the Lord, get very specific, be in agreement with your spouse or 
just find someone, a sister um, or a, a godly friend that you can be in agreement with over those things and put those things before the Lord, but get specific, write it down. Yes. It'll be very obvious Most definitely. when the Lord does it. That's so good. <laughs> well, Kira, thanks for sharing your story. And uh, Cora, it's good to see your face. I know you can't hear me, but she looks so cute. Bye, Cora. I love you, girly. <laughs> She's talking. I love it. All right. Well, you guys, make sure you are uh, subscribed to Java with Jen. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say, hey, it's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating, and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Also, don't miss our merch store where you can get super cool Java with Jen swag and coffee. Find it at javawithjenmerch.com. Until next time, remember... Hearing God's voice is simple, and He wants to be a part of your everyday life. See you next week.